Okay, welcome to another shop talk and today we're going to talk again about router sleds but now I have my rail system on the bottom, but I have this bad boy on the top. It is a cart from Take One Two, and it is absolutely killer. It has an amazing dust extraction system, which I'll show you in a minute, with some brushes. It's built like industrial level. It's kind of like a manual CNC, but you'll see when you're using it, uh, it almost self feeds, so there's no pushing hardly at all if you're doing uh, parallel cuts. So uh, first of all, I've just literally got it. So I'm just gonna run you through the very first time I use it on this slab on the top side, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail right at the end of the video. If you wanna watch it, uh, I'll just do a real quick uh, putting the thing together. There's quite a lot of components, but it doesn't take long. And actually on the Take One Two uh, YouTube channel, which you should have a, which you should have a look at, um, has every single step of building this thing really, really easy. The manual is easy to follow as well, but I just watched a YouTube uh, clip. But if you want to see me talking you through building it, just a quick one, it's at the end of the video. Anyway, let's get on and have a look how this thing works. You can see the lines, but you can't feel them. You really, it's, they're just minute. Well, I thought I might try. Just dropping the router by a couple of turns on here. Three, four turns, and dropping it, the head down. So I've just dropped it down, maybe about half a mil, and I'm gonna take all the locks off and just sort of freehand around and see how that works. So that's pretty impressive. I think if you take off too much with no um, <clears throat> no sort of locks on, you can obviously, like a router, you're doing an upcut, it does sort of want to dig in a bit, it doesn't go anywhere, but um, really, really good. Very impressed. Okay, so one of the main features uh, of this router sled is the amazing dust collection. So let's have a quick look how that works. So it comes with, Three sets of brushes. This first pass I used the middle one, so now I'm going to insert the larger ones because we've got down maybe a couple of mil off there. So now these will be in close contact. So it's really quick. You can just slide them in like this, slide the other one in on the top, and then slide this one down. And that locks it all in. And then you just got these two little spring loaded things. You've got these two little pins. Um, that you just put in the top there and that's it done. And now when we flip it, the brushes are actually well on the piece. The dust extraction will be great. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll flip this over in a sec and we'll do some more passes and you can see just how good the extraction is again. Okay, so I've just flipped the slab. It's perfectly level as I expected. Um, so a couple of things while we're here, I'll just show you what I've changed on my rail system. So this is the same rail I used on my router sled. It works perfectly with Take One Two uh, router sled. What I've done, I've added an extra 40-40 profile just using a Rui quick release clip, which I showed you before. Um, and that brings the slab up a bit. So this slab is uh, 52 mil. Um, with the Take One Two, you can actually get 
to probably just about 120, 110 mil slab directly if you're using an 80 mil rail because the Take One Two uh, mounting system is above. My one was directly on here, so I had a maximum of about 78 mil which I could flatten. So this does two purposes, stiffens it up as I say, gives it a bit more um, strength to the whole thing but they can move away and it also keeps the rigidity. The smaller stuff, I'm actually gonna try this, which is the Rui one, where you have a bit of rubber that can be mounted. And this is really grippy. I just wanna do some tests to see how much deflection or what, what sort of movement there is on that. But if you just put in a smaller little slab on, that may save you using clamps. So we'll try that on another go. So I'm just gonna set the height and you'll see where the brushes come into play. So you can see how those brushes are gonna really help. Um, now, if we set the height of the router, I tend to, um, on this first pass, it's quite difficult. You usually zip, you know, zip around. You could either check it off of here or whatever. Um, but the easy way to do it is just unlock it and then um, hit the slab, re-lock it, move around and see how much. It's not taking anything off there. So it's high that end, and it's taking a little bit there. So that's probably quite a good setting. Just there, it's simply taking its most off. So I'll go with that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this handle on. I'm not gonna do too much on this first pass. I'm gonna just whiz over it, take some of the really high spots down. Then I'll go down maybe a mil or half a mil uh, on the router setting here, and then do the whole slab. But you should be able to see how good the dust collection is. Now I would bear in mind that my little vac is not really up to the job. So I'm gonna be setting up the system in my old workshop with a kind of dustbin and like a vortex um, with a bigger vac in place because obviously uh, planing or this sort of work creates a lot of sawdust really, really quickly. And that little vacuum, it just doesn't have the capacity. So um, anyway, let's just give this a quick go and see how it gets on. So this should give you an idea of how much I'm taking off. On the worst spots there, that's probably up to about five mil. Um, and that's pretty much dust free. I'm gonna do a pass in a moment. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more, uh, just so you can see an idea of what it's doing with the brushes on and the vacuum on. Uh, bearing in mind, as I said, that little vacuum's not really keeping up with it, but um, I'll do a pass like that, then I'll turn it off and you can see the difference. Okay, so I'm gonna now turn off the um, dust extraction. Okay, so lots more sawdust. It's not on the slab, it's all getting blown to the side. But what I would say is what you can't really see is doing that pass without the brushes on, I can now 
um, feel and kind of sense the sawdust going in my nose. I can actually, the oak, this is oak, and I can actually feel it. Um, well, I'd want to wear a respirator or some sort of dust mask. What my vacuum's doing, even though it's st struggling with the large chippings um, from planing, but it is getting rid of all the fine dust and it makes a massive difference standing over it. Uh, and it, it obviously takes no longer using the dust extraction. So that is amazing. Uh, the system I was trying to work on never took into account dust extraction. Okay, another couple of things to point out. The, um, I'm still using my Tipman cutter. Uh, if you watch the other video, you'll see some information on there. Um, now don't forget at the moment, as far as I know, I'm gonna check, but I think they're running an offer, 50% off this cutter on Instagram. Uh, I got an email about it because uh, I'm on their mailing list. So if you want to pick up a cutter, this is the time to do it. Um, but anyway, I'm using this cutter 55 mil and the Perspex supplied with Take One Two is 40 mil. And the reason the hole is only 40 mil, um, I've been told is to help with dust extraction. So you get much more of a vacuum with the brushes on going out of this vacuum port. Uh, it's also crucial that the cutter turns this way. So you want the vacuum port on that correct side which is, as you're looking from the top, it's the top right. As the cutter turns, it feeds it into here. So that's all working really well. Now I did speak to uh, Take One Two about my quick release that I like to use. As you saw on the Festool, you can pop it out of the carriage, leave a spare bottom in here or base in here. Uh, obviously the problem being, you need to remove this route a bit before you can get it out now, which I I'm, just, I'm just a bit lazy really, and I just like to pop things around. So they very kindly sent me an extra plexiglass. Now, I'm gonna leave it as it is standard now for about a month, get my head around how much a dust extraction I should expect and how well it works. And once I've got used to it, I'm gonna cut this hole to 60 mil, five mil bigger than this bit, so that I can just pop the router in and out really quickly um, and carry on using it on other stuff. And then I'll run that test for a while as well. And I'll see, just in case anybody else wants to enlarge the hole for quick release, I'll see what difference it makes, um, if at all, uh, because for the convenience, I would really like the bigger hole. But all in all, I've got to say, it is absolutely stunning, really easy to use. If you've noticed when I'm walking down, because we're cutting long ways and we're not doing a cross cut, I'm hardly feeding it. I'm just resting my hand on the pole, pushing through. The, the router, the way it's cutting, is self-feeding, and then I drag it back, move it over one, one uh, 50 mil, and then go again. It's really easy to do. You're not down on the dust. Um, that's the one thing. I mean, I don't, as I said before on my video, I don't really suffer from a bad back at the moment, but bending over with all that dust coming up is quite a big difference um, to be able to stand up well away from it, not having to wear a mask, especially in this heat. But this is the kind of thing that I wanted to build, but I just I just couldn't get my, my stuff together. It, I, I can imagine there's tons and tons of work gone into the design of this. If you're flattening a lot of slabs, it is definitely worth the money. Um, I'm also going to be doing a video in a few weeks uh, where I drop a whole table in and you know I like to cut these slots for the um, channel, C channel, which goes in to stop the table cupping. And there's also other relief grooves that I like to sometimes put in outdoor tables just to help with the movement. This is going to be perfect because this is perfectly square. You can shunt the table up to that. That's going to give you a square. Put a stop here and a stop here. Um, quick lock, quick lock there, and then you could just move your router sled, bong, bong, done. No setting up, no lifting the router, no putting templates down. So this thing's gonna get tons and tons of use. It's kind of like a manual CNC uh, without all the hassle of running the CNC in the outdoors where I am here. For me, it's for making my life easy, working single-handed in a workshop. All of these gadgets make my life easy. Things like this don't cost more than a couple of days wages for somebody. And I just don't wanna be paying wages at this point. So, um, you know, all these machines are really, really helpful. Any kind of aid, they're not gimmicks by any means. I know people are gonna say you can do it with MDF and you can do it, you can do it with MDF. I've done it with MDF. It doesn't always stay true. It does get a bit damp if it's out here. I always need to check things to make sure it's square just in case, especially if it's an expensive slab. With all these profiles, like my profile benches, these things are perfect. They're lightweight, very easy to move around and store. They always do the job accurately. There's no messing around having to build it. It takes like half a day to build a decent router sled. This thing, you pop it together and it's done. So there's loads of benefits from all this stuff. Um, and if you're really into it and you make your living doing it, it's definitely worth the investment. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you didn't see, I've got a new channel started. This channel's kind of morphed into something that I didn't intend, but I'm really pleased with how it's going. This has become a kind of forum, really, for talking about gadgets in the workshop, joining techniques, all kind of modern, modern methods of furniture making and designing. 
uh, along the way with all, all the other tools and machines that we like to use. So the new channel is going to be much more based uh, for clients, for architects, designers, uh, people who are looking for, for furniture to be made really, less talking of kit, probably no talking, there will be a bit of music. Um, there is actually, as I said, two, I think there's three brand new videos over there now. I'd really appreciate it if some of you could face the music, as it were, and subscribe to help my subscription on there, help the channel start off. Um, but anyway, thanks so much again. Until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye.